I was asked a question by Earth2K8. Would love to hear what you know, think, feel about the Creator, Father, Earth, Mother aspects of Aboriginal people's spiritual beliefs. I've avoided this topic because I felt pressured by white Western atheists not to discuss it. Besides the fact that being raised in a white culture, I only have third-hand knowledge of anything having to do with Aboriginal and Indigenous cultures, traditions, and uh, spiritual systems. So I'm not anything like an expert on Aboriginal or Indigenous culture, and I am certainly not any kind of an expert on white Western critical thinking. I do know that there is suspicion on both sides about each other. And I think there may be a more simple resolution than people are seeing. People gain strength from their cultural histories and people can be snared in them. The desire to preserve what's left of people is so strong that there's an impulse not to touch anything, not to examine anything too closely, not to criticize anything, because languages and traditions and old ways of knowing how to do things have been stripped by force from indigenous people. Western academia and the Western sciences have been exploited for political purposes in such social experiments as eugenics and social Darwinism, which wasn't anything to do with what Darwin was ever talking about. He was never saying survival of the fittest between one race or culture of people and another, but it was exploited by and applied to so-called social sciences not based on any real hard critical thinking, but because there was a social and political agenda. Indigenous and marginalized people have more than good reason to be suspicious of Western science. And Western science has more than good reason to be suspicious of indigenous ways of knowing. Western science has the privilege, frankly, of techniques and technologies and schools of thinking that a lot of indigenous people never had the opportunity for. When indigenous people were kidnapped and put in boarding schools, it was not so that they could be on an equal playing field with Jonas Salk or Albert Einstein. It was so that they would learn to be good, obedient manual laborers. So stripping them of their language, their traditions, even their families, transporting them hundreds of miles to boarding schools, for years and years and then when they finally come back they don't remember their language, they don't remember their customs and the people in their own homes don't recognize them, don't understand them and quite often reject them. As to spirituality, as to Father Creator, Mother Earth, that's one paradigm in Indigenous and or Aboriginal philosophy. There are many others. You know the Westerners got stuck with this really kind of gruesome God. He's violent. He's, he's an abuser. And Western culture is steeped in abuse and domination and competition. And it has made Western culture extremely sick. And Western culture thinks it is winning if it manages to destroy another culture. But indigenous and aboriginal deities were often just as evil and just as cruel. I am an atheist. I am not anti-theist. I know that there is a lot in indigenous European traditions that has been lost or been corrupted. This fear Christians have now of um, Halloween or Samhain, for instance, that it's somehow demonic and satanic when of course we're talking about peoples for whom the concept of Satan didn't exist. But it doesn't matter to Christians. To Christians, well, you've been seduced, you've been tempted. We can learn so much from our histories. 
and we can do it by applying principles of psychology and there are some women and people of color who are beginning to do this as academic study a secular approach to the old spiritual traditions they are useful tools in how different peoples think and how they walk in the world do I think something masculine is the creator and that something feminine is the created no and even within indigenous and aboriginal cultures you see variants of that that it isn't all just male and it isn't all just female this is a doll from India you see that he is carrying it's either a sword or like a bat but when you turn the doll around you see that she is female and she is carrying a drum now I don't know all the symbolism behind this and I should probably look it up I got it because it's a two gendered doll I don't have a good working definition for spirituality it seems to be emotionally based I do know that I think I understand the concept of religion re-legion rejoining like reconnecting to the source legion means a bunch a huge number religion is humanity's first ventures into the scientific method posing a question why are we here what does that sound mean such as thunder why did grandma die of cancer and when people did not have tools and methods to answer those questions other ways people speculated sometimes quite deeply and seriously but it was unconfirmed hypotheses I need more than unconfirmed hypotheses I need an experience that can be replicated based on real data not on speculation but until we learned more rigorous ways of thinking about reality religion was a very useful tool for trying to find the answers to things and please remember both in Western traditions and in indigenous and Aboriginal traditions there were people who devoted quite a great deal of time to observation and experimentation some of the best scientific work in early Western scientific tradition was done in monasteries and even convents among indigenous people of the Western Hemisphere the field of archaeoastronomy is fascinating what people were capable of doing with very simple stone implements knowing the seasons of the year but for navigation and these people in the Western Hemisphere were on foot great distances from like present-day Mexico City up to Chaco Canyon at the Four Corners area out to the West Coast out to the East Coast we find artifacts from all those places scattered in all those places thousands of miles of traveling now when the Spanish came here the Maya had actual books and we don't know what was in them because the Spanish burned them because they said they were evil and satanic it was like burning the Library of Alexandria ignorant people setting it ablaze because they knew what was best and they didn't know anything so when I look at the Virgin of Guadalupe whom a shepherd found on a hillside that hillside turns out to be a buried temple to a goddess the stories of our mothers and fathers and others are riddles and koans they are the remnants of daily life that we will never understand because we will never have to live like they did they've been confined in spaces too small simply because our ways of recording history are so flawed some of us only have oral traditions and as the story gets passed around it can change unless it's memorized and even if it's memorized pieces necessarily left out we cannot know what the original stories mean but what we can do is use those original stories as a springboard we can be teleported back to a point in time 
and look out in the darkness and try to piece things together based on what facts and data we have. That means anthropologists who are even studying the contents of scat, let alone what's in charcoal fires and the items with which people were buried and the remnants of houses. We can listen to the songs like La Llorena. She is an Aztec goddess who is crying for her children at the hands of the Spaniards. But through the several hundred years of history, the story has been reduced to a woman who went crazy and drowned her children and is crying on the riverbank and she's used as a boogeyman to scare children into obedience because La Llorina will come and kill them. We have got to apply Western techniques and technologies to recovering our own histories. We can't do it based on sentiment. We can't do it, do it based on wishful thinking and hoping that that's the way it really was and that we were all peaceful peoples until the Westerners came with their gunpowder. That's not true. We weren't all just dancing and talking to the deer and having mystical experiences on mountaintops. It's not true. We have to face our histories and our traditions head on and really look at them with a critical eye and an inquisitive mind to try to recover and rescue as much of their context as possible. But we don't need to be in any way enslaved to them. We don't need to carry our traditions as burdens on our backs. You look at Native American art and you see how advanced it is now, how it has incorporated a Western techniques, but it maintains as much as it can its cultural origins, the way it has diversified, and there's quite an argument going on within the indigenous community whether or not that should be happening. But if there had not been first contact, native culture would have changed over time having a mass genocide that went on for hundreds of years did irreparable damage, not just to native people, but to the people who committed the genocides and to the world. The knowledge that we've lost, pharmacology, medicine, astronomy, who knows what else. But had Western indigenous people been left alone, their cultures would have changed. Their languages, the way they did things, as they invented and discovered new things, they would have changed things. Techniques would have changed. The ways of thinking. When one's language changes, one's way of thinking changes. That would have happened. We can't live in a museum. It's not, nor should it be, immutable, unchangeable. Humans change over time. We adapt. What we need now is not a romanticized image of the shreds of traditions from hundreds of years ago. What we need now is to embrace those shreds, learn as much as we can about them, put them in context, and now we need to embrace the new tools, the new techniques, the new ways of using language and thinking. We need to make sure that Western science is honest is not politically corrupted, is not just used for the economic gain of exploiters. Navajo should not be contaminated with uranium. People should not be getting black lung from going into the coal mines. People should not be living without water or electricity or internet. People should not be being hunted down and raped on their reservations by non-natives. We need to move into the fields of critical thinking, rationality, skepticism. We need to be moving into the sciences. We need to be participating or we will be railroaded by special interests.